It's a picture of Donald Trump leaning against that monument and it crumbling. Now, if that's not a sign, I don't know what is. So, I mean, it, everything that that monument stands for is collapsing right now in front of us. And that's why you're seeing them fighting Donald Trump. <laughs> Tuning into the Sharpening Report, I'm your host, Sam Johnston, and today we have an absolutely incredible show. Uh, let's just say that when I was preparing for it last night, that I, I actually had to stop because I got so excited and so filled with energy that I had to go for a run just to wear some of it off. Uh, that being said, we are going to dive into the Trump prophecy and the man who made the Trump prophecy, uh, the retired firefighter and current author, Mark Taylor. Mr. Taylor, how are you doing today? Oh, thank you, brother. I'm doing fine. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here. That's great. Well, let's uh, let's get started with, uh, why don't you just give us some background uh, of the prophecy, who you are, where you came from, a little bit about your story to set the ground. Sure, absolutely. Um, I'm a third generation firefighter. Uh, I was uh, retired out as a lieutenant in the city of Orlando Fire Department in 2006. And when I left the fire department in 2006, about a month after I retired, I had a visitation from the Lord. And in that visitation, um, he basically assigned an angel to me. And uh, there were things that he showed me in, in this visitation that I was going to write. And because I, where I was writing it, uh, it would affect my walk and the walks of others, which is kind of where we're at right now a little bit. And then uh, that was the first month that I retired in 2006. And then about five months after that, I got really bad sick. So I took a nosedive. And I mean, I went to doctor after doctor. This went on for four or five years. I had anxiety, depression. I had uh, I couldn't uh, eat for four and five days at a time. I was bedridden for four and five days at a time. Doctors couldn't find what was wrong with me. And, and you know, I had gone to a doctor that figured out uh, what was wrong with me finally. And uh, after four or five years, and I had a very low thyroid, I had severe adrenal burnout because of the fire service running day and night. And then I had the hormones of a 70 year old at 43. So this really put me on my back for a long time. And during that time, uh, you know, being a firefighter, it's a physical job. So, I mean, you're kind of a man's man. And what was happening for me personally is God was turning me into God's man. And I was having to die to self, almost literally, because there were nights I literally felt like I was dying. I didn't know how I was going to make it through the night. And so I found a doctor. Uh, he kind of moved on, and I found another doctor through Dr. Colbert, which is Mary Colbert's my co-author, his wife. And he kind of took the ball from there and trying to get me back up to health now. But in 2006, after I retired, uh, um, I had that visitation. And then in 2011, April 28, 2011, while I was still sick, I wrote the Trump prophecy. Now, how that came about was basically I was watching TV one day. And Donald Trump was talking about running. He didn't actually say he was he was going to run. He didn't commit. So I was watching him in an interview. I think it was Fox News, maybe, or something like that. And I was as I was watching, I didn't know a lot about him. I just knew he was a powerful, wealthy businessman. And that was it. So while I was watching him, I heard the Lord say, you're hearing the voice of a president. So I went into my office where I am right now, in my bedroom office. And I just like the Apostle Paul, I put pen to paper. And I sat down and listened to what the Holy Spirit was saying. And I just wrote out everything that the Holy Spirit was telling me. And it was April 28, 2011 is when the Trump prophecy was born. Now, at the time, I didn't I didn't have a, uh, a platform at the time. I, I didn't have any friends because all my friends had pretty much were the fire department. And they had stopped calling, stopped coming around because I was sick. I was isolated in my house. This went on for like 10 years almost. So I had shared it with my doctor and I shared it with my family and maybe one or two other friends that don't even you know, live locally. So that's all I really had to, as far as vetting goes, but it has been vetted and, and, and people have seen that it was in fact written in 2011, but that's pretty much it in a nutshell. I mean, uh, I, I had written it. And then when I had gone to Dr. Colbert, I had shared it with him. He shared it with Mary and then they just kind of took the ball around with it. And that's when it went public. Uh, I think it was in 2015 on my first true news interview, something like that. Yeah. 
Very interesting. Have you ever have you ever stopped and and been thankful that God didn't come to you in a burning bush because he probably would just put the fire out around the spot? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you know, it, it was strange because in that visitation, it, it, you know, you always hear about the, the great lights or, you know, this beautiful scenery or this, that, and the other. And, and let me go into this, this visitation because this was a little different than everybody else. And, you know, God speaks to everybody, and I think he appears to, to each person individually different. You know, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Depending on their personality or what their calling is. So I had gone to bed about one in the morning, and my or I'm sorry, I'd gone to bed, and about one in the morning, my wife came came to bed, and you know how you kind of roll over and you say, hey, what are you doing coming to bed so late? And you're kind of mumbling. And uh, she said, well, I couldn't sleep. I said, okay. So I rolled over, and immediately like that, I was caught up in a vision. I was in my bedroom, and I saw myself on my knees speaking in tongues and writing with this finger, my index, right index finger, in the floor in cursive, in the carpet. And then all of a sudden, I became myself. I was speaking in tongues on my knees, writing in the floor in cursive. And I looked in front of me, there was a black cloud in front of me, I knew it was God. I looked to my left, and I saw another cloud come around behind me, and he stood or stood to my right. And as I was writing in the carpet in cursive, speaking in tongues, light started coming out of this finger and out of my hand. Oh my gosh. And I cannot describe to you, brother, the amount of fear that I felt in that vision. It was, and it was like, I know God only gave me about the size of a grain of sand, but it felt like he could have vaporized me from existence. So at the time I was going to an apostolic church at the time and a, and a friend of mine was going to one of John Paul Jackson's satellite ministries. He was a dream interpreter, and which is kind of where I kind of got my training through. So I went to him and I said, Hey, this is what happened. And he says, Mark, he says, the cloud in front of you was the spirit of God. He said, the cloud that was came in and stood to your right was an angel that's been assigned to you. And he says, you were speaking mysteries because, you know, the Bible talks about when we speak in tongues, we speak mysteries. And he says, whatever it was that you were going, that you're going to do, God has anointed you because that was the light coming out of this finger in his hand to write. You wrote it in the carpet. So it will affect your walk and the walks of others. He says that fear you felt was the actual spirit of the fear of the Lord. Now, the interesting thing is, is that when I woke up, I was in the fetal position. I couldn't open my eyes for like 15 minutes, literally, because I was afraid of what I was going to see. Because that fear was still on me. And when I opened my eyes, the clock said 133. I looked right at the clock and it said 133. So this was like 33 minutes this was going on. And I remember rolling over, telling, talking to my wife, saying, hey, I think I just had a vision. And she said, even my voice was different because I'd been in the presence of God. And, you know, the Bible talks about when Moses was in God's presence, he had to veil his face. It was kind of like that same thing, but it affected my voice somehow. So that's where all that kind of started, and that was started my journey after I had retired, and it's not been an easy journey, I can tell you that, because of some of the things I went through, there were nights literally when I was so sick, I didn't know if I was going to make it uh, to the next next morning, that my wife would literally hold me while I cried, because I just wanted to be healthy and whole again, because you're talking about a guy who could do anything physically, you know, weightlifting and stuff like that, trying to stay in shape for his job, to I'm bedridden. And I can't do any, I can't even mow my yard. I'm having to pay people to do stuff for me. So that was, that was becoming, going from a man's man to God's man. And that was not an easy process. No, it doesn't sound like it. So, so that vision that you had, what, what, did you ever find out like what it was? Like, what did that lead to? What were you writing? Did you ever learn any of that? You know, I think that just that, you know, I tell people all the time, be careful what you wish for, because, uh, you know, like a, uh, Everybody wants a prophetic word. Everybody wants a prophetic word. Everywhere you go, if somebody wants a prophetic word. And it's like, time out. You don't understand what you're asking for because if it's truly a Holy Spirit-inspired prophetic word, a lot of times what I have found out personally, if I give someone a prophetic word, it sets off a chain of events. And it's the same thing that happened with this visitation I had. It set off a chain of events in my life to prepare me for what I was about to do, which was the Trump prophecy. So it was setting the stage and getting me prepared character wise, integrity wise, you know, uh, whatever the case may be that God's working on me dying to self so that I could withstand the weight of what God was about to put on me. But now this, even in 2011, I still wasn't, even though I wrote it, I still wasn't quite ready because there was still a process until 2015 when it finally went public. So, so the listeners who don't know what the Trump prophecies are, um, 
uh, go to to sword rescue s o r d rescue.com look up the prophecies read through them yourself uh, there are lots and lots of interviews out there that go through exactly what it is step by step and 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 mr taylor is right there to comment on them so uh, i kind of want to dive into more of the ex- the not as much talked about things um, and and really what your mindset was going through it I, I, how can you sit there and watch things that you've said just come true like what's what's going through your mind what are you experiencing well, you know, like I'll give you, for instance, like November 8th. I mean, everybody was saying that Donald Trump was not going to win. And, you know, all the pundits, the news media, even most of the church was saying it and believing it. And, you know, it was one of those things was like, OK, Lord, uh, you know, I just got to go by what you've told me, uh, you know, because God gave sign after sign after sign, brother. And the church still was not recognizing that Donald Trump was his chosen one. And one of the signs was his poll numbers would go up. The others would go down to the point where they got kicked out of the race. You know, God says, don't touch my anointed. And in that Trump prophecy, he says, Donald Trump is my anointed. So on the night of November 8th, things started getting re- really surreal because, I mean, we got a whole story in the book that we talk about, you know, how the, the, the prayer movement, the prayer the thing that we did, uh, prayer call. And, uh, but me and my wife were sitting in the bed because, you know, they were, they didn't call this thing to like what, two or three in the morning. So we were laying in the bed and of course, praying like everybody else in the, in the world, you know, and when they finally came out and it was official that he had won it, I mean, honestly, I, we were crying. I mean, I, I had tears in my eyes. I was crying. And I mean, it was probably one of the most humbling experiences that I've had in my walk yet. It truly was humbling. It really was. Because to think for one second that God would just choose some ordinary person like me and as sick as I was at the time to write that prophecy and watching it come to pass was just like nothing else I've ever experienced. And that's one of the things I want to encourage the people with right now. I don't have a degree of any kind hanging on the wall. I've never been to Bible college. I've never been to seminary school. I am just an everyday, normal, common person that has yielded himself over to the Lord Jesus Christ to use in any way that he wants to use me in. And even those that are sitting in a hospital bed or laying in a hospital bed or laying in a bed sick right now thinking, there's no way God's going to use me. Folks, he used me when I was at my sickest to write that prophecy. And if you'd have told me I'd have been sitting here right now having an interview about this, I'd have said, man, there's just no way. And But God will do it. And that's who he's going to use in this end time move, brother. He's going to use the everyday, normal, common person. And I believe, and I, and I don't say this with any pride or arrogance whatsoever, I believe that I'm kind of a forerunner. And there are hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people across the earth that are literally right on my heels coming that are ordinary common person that God's going to use to this end time move of the harvest. That's who he's going to use. And I back that up too. I, uh, as I was reading through these prophecies that I had never read before, it, it was like one after another was like, man, I've been thinking that like, that's been, I've been dwelling on that thought for a while and how I wanted to, to, to go about that, especially with, with the sharpening report. There's so many things out there that people are so negative and trying to, trying to scare people away. And in one of your prophecies, you're like, don't be, don't try to scare people, try to encourage people. I'm like, oh my gosh, I've, I'm doing that. And one thing I just wanted to, to read, I have it right here. It, it, it brought me to tears because since I am, you know, I'm 24, I'm young, uh, and my heart has been placed on this generation rising up. And in, in one of your prophecies, it, you says, it says, rise up my army and get in the fight for this generation is taking flight. This is the generation of warriors that, who, that those of old wanted to see and the enemy will have no choice but to flee. Rise up, stomp the enemy's head with, with bliss, send the enemy back to hell and into the abyss. This generation of warriors that all of hell is feared to face and see, but I am and all of heaven is cheering you on with glee that that just like i i was just i was i was in tears like you said it's just when when you hear the word of god it just brings you to tears and um so yeah i guess it's just it's it's just amazing i can't i agree so much that there are people right behind you you know that god is already starting to put into place yeah he's already putting them into place i mean some are you know, this this is going to be a process, I believe. I believe God's going to release people in waves, almost like a tsunami, so to speak. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so I believe he's already releasing people, and there are people literally right on my heels that are about to get released and get promoted. Because, you know, there's a difference between the body of Christ and the army of God. And that's what, if you'll notice, some of my uh, prophetic words end with your supreme commander, God. That's because he's addressing his army. 
And so there's a difference between the body of Christ and the army of God. And I want to, if it's okay, if I can explain this to the people. Oh, yeah. Because the body of Christ, think of the body of Christ as, as boot camp. And think of the army of God as the spiritually mature army that are hitting the beaches. So what God showed me was basically there's a World War II component to this whole thing. Because when I, when I wrote the Trump prophecy, he said, I want you to go back and I want you to rewrite General Eisenhower's D-Day speech and address it to my army. I did that. And then I, uh, so I also wrote uh, a prophecy called the Great Horse and said there was another Triple Crown winner coming. Well, I thought all this was supposed to happen in 2012. And I pushed them aside. I just I didn't know what to do with them at the time because, like I said, they didn't have a platform. So I looked for the triple crown race, looked for Donald Trump, uh, and nothing happened. So I thought, well, I missed it. You know what I mean? I'm just, you know, I'll look at it as practice, chalk it up. You know, I'll just put it aside. Well, you fast forward to 2015, and then all of a sudden, the triple crown, crown winner comes along. And I'm on the phone with my sister, and she says, wait a minute, what's today? And I said, it's D-Day. And I heard the Lord say, release the speech. So I pulled the speech and the great horse prophecy out, and I'm like, man, these two things just came together. Ten days later, Donald Trump announces he's running. Wow. So all three of these things came together in a 10-day period, and I went, Lord, I said, what happened? I said, I thought I missed all of this. I thought this was supposed to happen in 2012. And the Lord said, no, Mark. He says, it was supposed to happen in 2012. He said, but I delayed it. He said, because my people were not ready. He said, I let them have another four years of Obama and that garbage, basically. He said, because my people needed to build a righteous anger and say enough is enough. He said, I'm the one that held it off. But he said it was all supposed to happen in 2012. So he says, you didn't miss it. It was just the timing of it. So go back to, to World War II and this example of where the body of Christ is at right now. He showed me, if you know anything about D-Day, they were on those ships for three days. And these, these soldiers were being tossed about to and fro. They were, they were seasick before they ever hit the beaches. And he said, Mark, that's where most of the body of Christ is at right now. He said, all they can see is the storm and they're being tossed to and fro and they're sick. They, 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 can't, they can't even hit the beaches right now, which is what you're seeing take place. And then he says, you've got the next group that have been promoted out of the boats and into the landing craft. They're approaching the beach. Now, if you know anything about D-Day, again, they had placed obstacles on the beach to keep the armor from landing. But he says, this group has gotten promoted out of the boat into landing craft. All they see are the obstacles. Now, the obstacles could be different for each person, depending on what it is. But he says, all they can see is the obstacles. And that's what they're focusing on. And that's keeping them from hitting the beach. And then you have the army of God, which is what took place November 8th, when you have people that are one heart, one mind, one accord, in unity, which is what God is looking for right now. They are hitting the beaches storming inland, taking ground for the kingdom of God, and they're holding it at all costs. And they're not focusing on the storm. They're not focusing on the obstacles. They're focusing on the mission. And that's what the, the, the body of Christ has got to get right. Stop focusing on the storm. Stop focusing on the obstacles. Focus on the mission. What is the mission? To take ground for the kingdom of God and hold it at all costs. But there are things that can get you basically demoted, if you will, or keep you from getting promoted into the army of God. And that is slinging fiery arrows at one another, like we're seeing taking place in, in, in the body. You know what I mean? So it's, 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 you know, we're not all going to agree on everything. That's just a fact of life. There's nothing we can do about it. But it doesn't mean that just because we might not agree on something, a, a certain scripture, or you know, uh, how a person should dress, or this, that, and the other, that doesn't mean I should be slinging fiery arrows at you. You're my brother. I don't care who you are. The way I look at you is that my love triumphs over anything and everything that you could possibly do or say, and, and we're in that foxhole together. I'm going to have your six because I know you're going to have mine. It doesn't matter what we, how you think or how we believe differently. That's the difference with the spiritually mature army of God, and that's what you're seeing taking place. It wasn't the church that won that victory November 8th. It was the army of God. It was the remnant because the church still does not have their act together yet. I don't know, guys, if that doesn't get you pumped up and ready to fight, I don't know what is. Like, you guys got to, like, it's just, like, I'm just so amped. Like, I have so much, like, excitement built up for the, the future. It's, like, because we've been, 
I mean, growing up, and especially especially I've grown up, and you watch the news, and it's the debt is overwhelming, and the then you get into like right. the fringe thing, and the globalists are in control, and there's no hope, and you can't do anything about it, and you're just not much longer. People just waiting for the rapture, basically. It's just like, oh, yeah. I guess I give up. It's just like, no, like let's do it. Let's let hit that land. Let's yeah. go. It's so exciting. But, uh, and let me, it's funny you bring that up. Let me hit on something right there. You just touched on something, brother, right there, is that the escapism mentality. The escapism mentality is, is a lie from the pits of hell itself. That is exactly what the enemy wants. And what people don't understand is that when you take yourself, when you have the escapism mentality, you are not a threat to the kingdom of darkness. You have just taken yourself out of the fight. You are aiding the enemy. People don't understand that. You're aiding the enemy. What is it in the natural that you get charged with for aiding the enemy? Treason. What makes it? What makes people think it's any different in the spiritual? The Lord told me, he says, these people that have the escapism mentality or who are aiding the enemy, he says, they're committing spiritual treason. He says, so you, you, these people have to get, they think the doom and gloom message has decimated the church. I am not a doom and gloomer. Jesus said, preach the good news. That's what this is about. This is about the good news. And we have been preaching doom and gloom for decades. And the problem is, is that they can't get away with it or, the, or they, they can't get away from it. You know what I mean? And when you do bring along good news, like stuff what, like what I have, I've been shunned. I've been uh, called every name in the book, uh, saying I don't know what I'm talking about or whatever the case may be, because it's good news. It's because they're so indoctrinated with the doom and gloom. When you give them good news, they can't even receive it, brother. It's, it's amazing. And, and so. The doom and gloom message, see what worked five years, what worked 10, 40 years ago, the doom and gloom is not going to work today. We need to be asking heaven for strategies and tactics of how do we approach people? How do we get people into the kingdom? They're going to have to be shown, not talked into the kingdom. So the doom and gloom message has actually gone the other direction. And the reason I say that is, is because I'm getting the emails from people, Christians now, who are saying, Mark, I can't take the doom and gloom message anymore. I'm hearing it from the mainstream media. I'm hearing it in the church, and I cannot take it anymore. I'm fixing to commit suicide. Literally, I have had people write in and say, Mark, I was literally on the verge of committing suicide because I couldn't take the doom and gloom anymore. I heard your message. I didn't do it. I rededicated my life to Christ. That's what the doom and gloom message has done. It's not working anymore. People want good news. I can turn on the news media and hear doom and gloom. I can walk into any church and hear doom and gloom. You know what I mean? Preach the good news. Look, guys, we are going to have victory after victory after victory for the army of God. We are an unstoppable force. We have the momentum. It will not stop. It will continue like a tsunami. I'm telling you, we are taking things back that belong to Christ. All right, so how? What what's the steps right now? What what do we what do we gotta do? You you talk about uh, the things that that are gonna happen. Uh, the the Supreme Court get five yes. getting replaced in total. Which which right. by the way, guys, I was doing research last night and I was reading. I was specifically about OPEC and and then I was also reading about the the one judge that's gonna retire. Um, and I I didn't. I wasn't even looking at the news. I was just reading through what he was saying. And I woke up this morning, and one of the top two stories in the news, OPEC's freaking out, and a judge is thinking about retiring. It's like, it, it was just like, yeah. it was just, the timing is so unbelievable. And uh, so as Christians, with my my job and my, my passion for being a host is to not do that doom and gloom. And, yes. and not do the prosperity gospel, gospel either on the flip side of that. It's right, right in the middle. Let's get down and dirty. What's coming for Christians, and what do they have to do to make sure that it comes? Exactly. Okay, so a couple things that, that I encourage people to do right off the bat, because I get too many emails, I get too many people coming up to me. They've got to stop listening to the doom and gloom. That's first and foremost, period. Because what happens is, and I could go into a whole teaching on this almost on its own, is that you are listening to the frequency of the second heaven when you listen to doom and gloom. And when you listen to the doom and gloom, you can literally become addicted because the goal of the enemy is to change the DNA of man, and he's doing it through the frequency of doom and gloom. And I'm not going to go into that whole thing. That's a whole other program, okay? So stop listening to the mainstream media. I tell people, go directly to the president's Twitter feed and his Facebook page because he's bypassing the media. Now, he has been criticized for this even by Christians, and it's like you don't understand. He's doing exactly what God's telling him to do. I guarantee it because He's not releasing bad news. It's not doom and gloom. When you read his Twitter feed, it's all good news. 
it's almost like a father figure saying, guys, don't worry. It's going to be okay. This man is a prophet, and people don't understand it. He's prophetic, literally. Everything this man has said has come to pass, has it not? I mean, and that's what I try to get through to people. So go to his Twitter feed, go to his Facebook page, and stop listening to the mainstream media. And stop listening to the doom and gloom messages at church. You want the good news right now. You need to saturate yourself with good news to change that frequency right now that's going on in people. It's bombarding people right now. All right. The other thing is, is get out of the escapism mentality. And sometimes that can be hard to do, but you've got to get in the fight. If your life, I tell people, if your life is not a living hell right now, then you're not a threat to the kingdom of darkness. When you're a threat, yes, you're going to have some backlash. Yes, you're going to have warfare. Get over it, folks. It's part of warfare. You just, but it's time to get in the fight. And because God is, at, look, God is trying to recruit for his army. He's saying, come on, come all, because there's going to be victory after victory after victory. Come over to the winning side right now. This is where we're, where we're at. But you can't do it sitting in a survival bunker with food waiting on the apocalypse. Because I got news for you. You're going to be waiting a long time because nobody's going anywhere until the fight is finished. And Jesus said to occupy till he comes, period. So you can't occupy sitting in a bunker letting everybody else do the work for you. That's committing spiritual treason. So stop listening to doom and gloom. Get in the fight somehow, some way. I don't care if you're sitting in a bed sick somewhere. You can intercede right there where you're at, warfare-wise. Use your gifts. Use your influence. Use what you have at your disposal right there. God will honor it right there where you're at. Wonderfully said. And there's so much scripture to back up what you said. Uh, don't look at the doom and gloom. It says in scripture, if you peer into the darkness, it's going to be too tempting for you and you're going to fall into it. it. You know, be active. With the, um, uh, Faith without action is dead. It's just like, it's right. it's scripture. You can't argue what he's saying. Right. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And if you are speaking doom and gloom, look, let me tell you what's happening with these, with, these, with these prophets of doom and gloom and the pastors of doom and gloom. They're actually prophesying their own doom. They don't understand that. And it's because God has something greater for his army right, right now. And the Lord told me, he says, these guys that have been preaching this doom and gloom message for so long, because now it's going the other way where pity, people aren't being saved. They are killing people, literally killing people through this doom and gloom message. They now have blood on their hands and they need to repent. So that's why I say get away from the doom and gloom message. Get on the winning side with, with the good news. So, um... Let's let's uh, let's be fair about this, and let's let's come at it from a, a skeptical view. Uh, one, I guess, what? How were you vetted, and how how do people know that this Trump prophecy is the real deal? I had a uh, I've had people vet me. Um, I had a pastor from Jerusalem, for instance, uh, right after I did my first interview. Uh, what was it? Oh, I can't remember the dates now. I've got so many dates in my head. Uh, whenever that went public, a year and a year and a half ago, a little over a year and a half ago, whenever it was, and he had called and vetted me. Uh, talked to the doctor that I gave the prophecy to right when I wrote, wrote it. I had another friend that I gave it to. And, you know, I don't count family and friends or family really, because I mean, you know, family can say anything to stick up for one another. So, but he had vetted, vetted me through that process. He was one person that did. So I've, I've been vetted as far as that is concerned. Okay. And do you think that Trump, Trump, uh, do, do you think Trump knows about your prophecy? And do you think that he is aware of who he is and what he's doing? You know, I don't, I have been told he's aware of the prophecy. Now, I don't know. I cannot confirm that. I've never spoken to the president. I've never met the president. I mean, I'd love to. But, I mean, um, as far as do I think that he knows what he's doing, I think absolutely he knows what he's doing. He's 10 steps ahead of everybody else. And that's that's where he frustrates the enemy right there because God has anointed and gifted this man to be 10 steps ahead of everybody else. So, um so I'm kind of losing track of where I'm, where I want to go. This is like not at all where I was planning on going, and now I have to, to backtrack. But praise the Lord. For Sorry that. about that, brother. No, praise <laughs> the Lord. That's what we needed to talk about. I just got I don't know. I get so excited, and and I. Yeah. Well, I mean that's what you, that's what we're supposed to be. We're supposed yeah. to be excited about this, man. We're not supposed to be down in the dumps. I mean, come on. I mean, we're winning here. We've got the momentum going. Yeah, and I I feel you. I, I get so frustrated with Christians who don't finish the book. It's it's we're gonna win. That's it. It's written already down. Why are you why are you sad? I I look forward to to becoming. Uh, I, I'm young and I haven't really faced this. I mean, I've had my fair share of battles, but I haven't faced the hate that you face. But I can't wait till I start getting hate mail and, and people being mad at me. I'm like, oh, good. I'm finally doing something good. <laughs> well, trust me, after this program, you probably will with me being on here, brother. Um, so let's uh, so what's what's to come? What's the, the prophecies that have yet to be fulfilled? You know, 
uh, the Trump prophecy, um, uh, you know, I, I, and I don't I, I usually let Mary speak on some of these interviews when it comes to this, because I, I don't want people thinking that I'm, I'm tooting my own horn because I, I just I don't do that. All right. Um, but every line on that prophecy so far has come to pass, except for the last line. And that where it says that the uh, mainstream media will begin to agree with him. Now, we got to ask ourselves, what is it going to take for the mainstream media to begin to agree with him? Well, we're going to lose a couple of news media outlets. I honestly believe that because God is done with the news media. He's fixing to clean house. Um, you know, again, because you cannot attack God's anointed, not have ramifications. And uh, Donald Trump is his anointed. Now, Megyn Kelly was a prime example. Megyn Kelly, uh, on the first debate, she was going to go after Donald Trump, try to take him down. What people don't understand is the morning of that debate, she got violently ill. This is words out of her own mouth. She got violently ill to the point she didn't think she was going to be able to do the debate. She had a bucket sitting next to her and a blanket over her legs during the debate. And that was a warning shot from God. Do not touch my anointed. Now, she did it anyway. And look what's happened to Megyn Kelly. Her life has never been the same, and neither has Fox. Fox has been in chaos ever since then. So that's what you're going to see happening. I think you're going to see the news media cleaned out. You're going to see uh, corrupt government officials uh, go down. You, I, I said uh, on the, I did a Jim Baker show here not too long ago. Um, I, I released something that uh, you're going to see arrest warrants taking place, and we're going to have to be careful how they do this because um, there's this is going to go so deep they could take down parts of government, literally. And you're going to see military-style tribunals break out. Divine justice is not coming. Divine justice is being poured out right now. And here's what people don't understand because there's been a 100% media blackout on this. 3,000 elite pedophiles have been arrested since the inauguration. And that's not a whole lot of common knowledge. People don't understand that. It's because they've had a 100% media blackout on it. And there are two Navy SEALs right now, ex-Navy SEALs, that are trying to get the word out. They're making a documentary to show, to try to get the word out to the public that how many arrests have actually been made. Now, these are well-common names, and they're not releasing the names of elites that have been, that have been arrested. And then um, you've also got uh, ex-special forces that are going around the world right now, literally pulling these kids out of these satanic cults uh, of pedophilia, uh, sac child sacrifices, and they're rescuing these kids and bringing them back is what they're doing. And this is the stuff you're not hearing on the news right now. So you're going to see, literally, I prophesied in 2015, well, you, you read the prophetic word, that the Clintons were going to go down, Obama's going to go down, uh, they're all going to go down. Everybody who is corrupt, time is up for those who are corrupt, is what the title of the prophecy was, and God is very serious when he says he's going to clean house. And it's just, everybody keeps asking me, when's it going to start, when's it going to start? It's already started. It's just, they're not saying anything. And the other thing you have to understand, Trump being 10, 10 places ahead of everybody else, he's not going to tip his hat as to what he's doing. You know what I mean? He's just not going to. You're just going to wake up one morning, and all of a sudden Hillary Clinton's going to be in jail. Boom. Or she's going to be before indicted before the committee, Senate committee. You know what I mean? Um, and, and I believe she will go to jail uh, because it will also be a sign to the United States that that spirit called Jezebel has been locked up and the key thrown away. So you're going to see that. Uh, I wrote the um, with the judges. Uh, um, now, when everybody was starting to panic when Obama was going out of office because – um, I had gone to Mary Colbert, my co-author, and I said, Mary, I said, you know, I originally prophesied that there was going to be three Supreme Court justices replaced. And I was meditating on the Lord one day, and, and the Lord came back and he said, Mark, he says, it's going to be five now. So I'm like, okay, well, I don't change the prophetic words once I write them. You know, I just, that's like tainting something. I don't do that. So I wrote a new prophetic word, and, I, and he said, one's going to die. He said, one's going to retire. Three will be caught in a scandal and they will have to, to be removed. So I went to Mary and I told her this, and she can verify it all. I didn't write it down in the prophecy because I just I got the prophecy after Scalia died as far as what was going to truly take place. But I said, Mary, I said, one's going to die. It's not going to be who we expect. Well, it was like a month, month and a half later, Scalia died. And so everybody was panicking because we all know that he didn't die of natural causes. Give me a break. You know what I mean? Uh, they were trying to force Ob force their hand to get uh, uh, a liberal judge in before he retired. Well, everybody was panicking. Well, at Scalia's funeral, God gave two signs that that was not going to happen. So I wrote that prophetic word saying, no, this is not going to happen. It has been reserved for Donald Trump. And the day that he was inaugurated, that part of the prophecy came to pass. And then, of course, you know, he, he replaced with, with Gorsuch. Now, 
in that prophecy, God says, I will replace five Supreme Court justices, and God himself is going to reform the court. And when he does that, God says, the great I am, meaning God, he himself will take on that great case called Roe versus Wade, and it will be overturned. You're going to see that overturned. And that is going to be the day, I believe, that you're going to see, well, you're going to see America prosper like never before. But spiritually speaking, Baal is the strong man over America, and the food source for Baal is the aborted babies. So the day that that's repealed, it's going to get kicked back to the states, and it'll be up to each state to handle it from there on. But on a federal level, you're going to see that overturned. So there's such a divide right now in America, though. You can see it everywhere you go. It's either you hate Trump or you love Trump. I mean, there's some right. in the middle, but it's such a it's a great divide. Do you think that will start seeing people on the hate Trump start to realize who he is and come over? Or do you think that those people are just going to like leave or, or what, what's going to happen? No, I, I think what you're going to see happen is because I wrote a prophecy called America, America. And in that in that it talks about that uh, even the Trump prophecy. It talks about how America is going to prosper under this president. America is going to prosper like never before. I wrote another uh, prophecy called Energy Energy uh, that Israel and America will be the number one energy producers in the world. Now, again, you got to go back to World War II again and because there's a World War II component to all this. England was the hub by which the D-Day assault was launched. So you had manpower, money, food, uh, weapons kept pouring into England. Well, now it's America. America is going to be the hub by which the end time assault will be launched to free the spiritually oppressed people of the earth. So you're going to see manpower, equipment, money, food, everything's going to be pouring into the United States for that last push across the earth. So that's what you're going to see happening. And, and that's why Donald Trump's in where he's in right now. You know, you, you, it's, unfortunately, it takes all these things to move the gospel. And uh, so that's what you're going to see happen with America. We're going to prosper like never before. We're going to take the fight to the enemy. And I love what Donald Trump says. He says, you're going to get sick of winning. <laughs> and, I, you, know, you know, if there is such a thing as that, and it's almost like that with the army of God. So God, that's, that is actually prophetic. That is God speaking through that man to the army of God. He says, you're going to get sick of winning because that's exactly what the army of God is going to do. It's going to be win, 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 period. The days of losing, and that's the other thing. The days of being in a defensive posture for the, for the army of God doesn't take a defensive posture like the church does. You know, they're, they're not cowered down in the landing craft, afraid to hit the beaches, okay, because being politically correct or whatever the case may be, the army of God takes an offensive posture. It, they don't wait for the enemy to come to them. They go to the enemy. They take that ground and they hold it. And that's what the church has got to learn to do. It's time to go on the offensive. I agree. It's it's there's so much sitting around. You go to church and you consume a message. You go home, you consume some dinner, you, you watch TV, you consume some brain control controlled tv it's just like what yeah. it's it, you're there you're you're allowing the the new world order to create your own reality and you have, yes. to, you have to step up and and create your own reality instead of yes. letting them feed you what you think the world is go out and do your research and that's why people are, are watching this show right now is because they want to they want their own reality you know and it's it's not postmodernism. it's it's finding the truth and then making your life fruitful because of it Right. Don't don't. And that's the other thing about the doom and gloom messages. They're indoctrinating you when you listen to that garbage. I don't care if it's in church. I don't care if it's in news media. I don't care where it is. It is they're indoctrinating you to listen to that garbage. And it's changing, literally changing the DNA of man is what it's doing. They're trying to the enemy is literally trying to steal your free will because they want you to think they want to control your thinking habits. They want to control how you act, how you speak, all of that stuff. That's why I tell people stop listening to that mess it, it, it's killing it's killing people literally killing them so uh, uh you know um but when you start listening to the good news and you saturate yourself with the good news uh, you know I, I don't even listen to the news media most of the time people say hey did you hear what happened to the news no i don't know what happened to the news <laughs> you know unless i may check fox's website or something like that you know what i mean and, and that's and that's about it hit the highlights and uh but you know it, it's just one of those things where it, it is time to break out it is time for a massive move and the army of God is doing it. It's the remnant that's doing it. God's just trying to add to His numbers right now. And if you'll, you know, if you'll notice, um, the churches, and, and we can go into this as a whole other subject too, with the five hundred one c threes and stuff like that. You know, um, what you're going to see happen, you're going to see church done in a whole different light. You're going to see home churches breaking out all over the country. I believe you're going to see in the marketplace. You're not going to see church done the way it's been done uh, over the centuries. Uh, I, the Lord showed me in these 
uh, home groups that basically they're going to be small spec op groups. And in these spec ops groups, God's going to release, you know, God told, woke me up one morning, he says, loose the battle plans of heaven on earth. And each spec ops group will have a different battle plan. Because if you notice, even in the natural, and as, as a small spec op group, they're going to go in, they're going to have their own plan, they're going into rescue or they're doing this, and the next group will go in to do something totally different. It's going to be that way in these different small groups like this. And that is where you're going to see the true power and true authority of God come through with some of these smaller groups like that. Brother, we're gonna have to listen. listen we're gonna have to talk a little bit after the show, but uh, I, out of the mouth of two witnesses, because I, my family and I have been working on this ministry to to connect people around the country, especially using uh, different platforms, because there's the remnant is so alone. They feel so alone because Satan yes. convinced them that they're crazy for what they think, and and right. there there are there's no one else around them that think the same way or that know the truth and that's just so not true there's such a there's such a huge following of people who are awake and we got to find a way to connect them all so yeah that is uh that's incredible that you're saying that because um that's what god has put on my heart as well uh, and, and even with this show again people like it, there i've created a website i'm not ready to release where it is quite yet but it, it's about connecting people uh and, and if you have a small group if you're listening to this right now and you have a small group somewhere let me know about it because there's probably people around you that, that feel alone. Uh, so please let me know about it. Um, so so you talked a little bit about the 501c3, and I guess I want to dive into it a little bit because it talk, it, we were okay. talking on the church uh, and the, I, I don't know, because like the building church versus the, the real church. Uh, right. and, and the one thing that you said to me, which is fascinating because our last episode was uh, Dr. Michael Lake, and we talked about the bricks and, and the mortar of the Tower of Babel. Uh, and, yep. and you tie that into the 501c3, I think is fascinating. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, the 501c3 was a death sentence for the church, period. You know, it, the, the Bible uh, talks about, you know, when you take a bribe, it blinds the eyes of the righteous, and per, or blinds the eyes, and it perverts the words of the righteous. And that's why I think you see so many prophetic words going from one end of the spectrum to the other and everywhere in between, and these different messages, is because it's blinded them. They've taken a bribe. And it's, it's because the 501c3 back in 1954, they call it the Johnson Amendment. And this guy was a 33rd degree Mason. Well, first off, this guy wasn't smart enough for all of this period to put all this together. This was a think tank that put all this together. Now, 1954 was also the same year the Bilderbergs was established. Hmm. Coincidence? I think not. You know what I mean? So, I mean, uh, so they, they basically knew that if we can't beat the church, they don't, the church was flowing in power and authority before then. And if they can't beat the church, let's get them to join us. So they gave them that 30 pieces of silver, and of course they knew towards the end times that these pastors become dirty, filthy lucres like the Bible talks about, and they took it and ran with it. They fell into the trap. So when they did that, they entered into an agreement with the kingdom of darkness. They entered into an agreement with Baal, a covenant with Baal. It's the Baal system, and it's the same thing the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds. It's the same money-banking system, right? So when they did this, the Lord was showing me that it basically it kind of opened a demonic portal over these churches. Now, we don't have exact numbers, but our best guess is about 95% of their churches in America are 501c3s. So that tells you how much we're hurting. But you're seeing literally God shaking the church. Now, I, I prophesied uh, on one of those prophecies. Um, I can't remember. I don't have it in front of me. Uh, I said that when Donald Trump is elected, a sign will be given. Uh, the earth shall quake because of who I have selected. Four days after he was ele or, uh, elected, there was a massive earthquake in Christchurch, New Zealand. Now, you got to ask yourself, why Christchurch, New Zealand? Because there's a shaking and a quaking coming to Christ's church, period. And it's a judgment. The, the church is under judgment. Judgment starts in the house of the Lord. The churches are under judgment. The leadership's under judgment. Now, they were waiting for a tsunami to come in. They'd already had the first wave. They were waiting on the second one to come in. The first wave I think you're already seeing taking place, you're seeing a mass exodus from the church right now because people are tired of it. They're, they're tired of the money. They're tired of the prosperity message. They're tired of, of the moral issues. They're tired of the no accountability, uh, all this stuff. The, the second one I believe you're going to see is going to be the finances dry up. You're going to see the superstars go away. We've already had four fall this year already. Um, so, I mean, uh, the superstars are going to go away. It's going to be that everyday normal common person we talked about. But the 501c3, and here's what people don't understand. When you entered into a covenant with Baal, the patient or the enemy is very patient. In 1954, let's go just jump 10 years ahead. Prayer got taken out of schools. Where was the church? Silent. Nowhere to be found. 
Let's jump ahead another 10 years. The big one, Roe versus Wade. Where was the church? Silent. Nowhere to be found. People always say, I get so sick and tired of hearing it. Oh, America's under judgment because of the, the aborted babies. No, it's not, folks. It, the, the blood of those babies is on the church's hands. The church is the spiritual and moral compass of any country, period. The church sold its soul for that 30 pieces of silver, and the blood of those aborted babies, the church being taken out of schools, is all on its head, period. So when you enter into a covenant, the Bible says do not be unequally yoked. When you're a 501c3, you are now equally yoked with other 501c3s. You're now yoked with the Satanic Church, Islam, Wicca, Pro-Choice, Planned Parenthood. If you want to know why the pro-life 501c3 ministries can't make headway in the legal uh, aspect, is because they are yoked with pro-choice and Planned Parenthood. So I know what people are saying. You don't understand, Brother Mark. I was on the courthouse steps screaming at the top of my lungs. No, you don't understand. When you are yoked with Baal, Jesus says you can't cast out Satan with Satan. So when you are in covenant with something, how can you cast an entity out that you're in covenant with? You can't. So that's why the church has not been able to make any ground. This is why the remnant is moving forward right now with God's agenda is because of that demonic contract. Now, that's just one part of it. The second part of that is that's on a federal level. The second part of that, it was never, ever intended for a church to be a corporation, period, bar none. Jesus turned the tables over in the temple. Why did he do that? Because they were turning it into a business, period. And he said that my house will be a house of prayer. So now you have the state level. So people can scream, oh, Jesus is, is the, uh, the head of my ministry, all you want. If you're a 501c3, no, he's not. Baal is. The state is. The pastor is working for the state, period. So we're called to rule and reign and to govern. So how can we govern when we're being governed over? We have two levels of government over us right now. This is why the church is not flowing in power and authority right now. Is it, so we have to ask ourselves, have we truly ever had a five-fold ministry? Have we been governing? Because under the 501c3, I don't think so. And the problem with that is, is because this demonic portal that they're in covenant with that's going on in the churches is how can they flow in, in power and authority? You really can't. And we've lost our discernment. It's affecting our discernment to the point that the church has no discernment. So if the Holy Spirit is actually operating in a church, do they really, can they really discern between the difference between that and the Kundalini? A lot of churches can't. And a lot of church, a lot of places are operating under that Kundalini spirit but they can't discern it because of that, I believe, that 501c3 stuff that's going on. So this, this 501c3 has just decimated the churches. It really has. And even, even so what you just said was, was brilliant, and I can't agree more. Uh, it, it, but the, just the logic of a 501c3, especially if you're giving to a church, like, oh, I can put it on my tax return and get money back. It's like you're like not even getting the point of what a tithe is at all. If you're trying to get money back from your tithe, like you're, you're where does this say? <laughs> where does this say in the Bible that I get a tax return on my giving? <laughs> I mean, seriously. I, I mean, you know, and, and honestly, that's not true giving when you're expecting something in return. Yeah. Now, I get there's the law of sowing and reaping. I get that. But you're giving. A lot of people are giving to get that tax return at the end of the year. And so, if you've been giving and giving and giving and giving, and you've not gotten a uh, a harvest per se, like these prosperity preachers talk about, is because you're giving into the wrong system. And don't think for one second that Baal himself won't give you a nice tax return. He won't give you those crumbs to keep you feeding him. Because that's what's going on. You're not getting blessed by the Lord through that system. You're getting blessed, or not even blessed, but you're being cursed through the Baal system is what you're doing, is how you're getting your money back. Yeah, breadcrumbs is a perfect example. Just lead you along one step at a time. Lead you on. Yep. It's time to break free, guys. It's time to step out and tell – if you go to church and you love your church, because I know there's a lot of churches out there that, that do preach the word, and if you're the 501c3, it's time to step up and be like, guys, do you know what that is? Step up and ask your pastor. Talk to the elders. It, it's time to do this now. As you see Mr. Taylor talking about this, the God is moving. Are you moving? That's the question you got to ask yourself. And the, the, the thing is, too, as, and I'm not saying this from a sales standpoint, so please don't – I don't want people thinking I'm trying to make money off of this because I'm not. But I go into detail on that 501c3, and what we have found out is that people are buying the book now because I get, I, I get hammered with emails. People are handing it to their pastor because it's got that 501c3 section in it. So you can actually use the book as a weapon for people that don't understand what's going on. Hand it to your pastor. And I tell people, look, God told me, he said, the sign will be, because, see, they don't have to have the 501c3. They're already exempt through the Constitution. 
So if they refuse to come out of the 501c3, that's your sign. The Lord said, don't walk, run, because those churches are under judgment right now. And I'm just telling, there was a time when I was on the phone with my intercessor, my head intercessor, about six months ago. I said, I feel like I want to scream at the top of my lungs, get out of the church, get out of it now, because it's under judgment, period. So you're going to see churches collapse. You're going to see the doors shut. You're going to see all kinds of things happen. Uh, Again, we've just lost four this year already, major players. And I'm not going to name names, but we've lost them. People can look it up on the news. There's a whole lot more where that came from because I'm telling you, God has had it with the way we're doing church. Yeah. Well, when you see when you see churches closing and the word of God spreading, I think people start to realize that maybe the church really wasn't that doing that that much work like they should. Um, right. So one one last thing you prophesized uh, about prophesied about um, is the monument will be toppled. I thought that was pretty interesting. What do you mean by that? I believe it's the Washington Monument. That's the first uh, thing that came it's... to my mind, too, when, when yeah. I read that. I don't know why. But... It's, well, it, and it's funny because, you know, um, people have to understand what that monument represents. Number one, it was built by the Freemasons. Number two, it's a phallic symbol to Baal. Uh, so if, you know, I, I woke up um, uh, the other morning. Uh, actually, I, I was about 530 in the morning. I had, I've got some puppies. I was out here. I live in the middle of nowhere. So I kind of fell asleep in the chair on the front porch. And the Lord speaks to me a lot of times as I'm drifting off or if I'm you know, starting to wake up a little bit in the twilight season. And I saw the Washington Monument. And you know, at the bottom of the monument, it's got those circle of flags at the bottom. And those weren't circle of flags anymore. It was a sinkhole beginning to open up. And I thought, wow, our warfare is working, man. It is working. So I called my intercessor, my head intercessor. I said, hey, I said, this is what I saw. And she was like, oh my goodness, Mark, I forgot to send you the picture. Did you see the picture on the cover of Time Magazine? I said, no. It's a picture of Donald Trump leaning against that monument and it crumbling. Now, if that's not a sign, I don't know what is. So, I mean, everything that that monument stands for is collapsing right now in front of us. And that's why you're seeing them fighting Donald Trump so hard. That's why you're seeing them fighting the church so hard right now. I got a hit piece put out on me by the Huffington Post. And it said, the headlines read, why the DNC should be worried about Donald Trump's Evangelical Army of God. Wow! Congratulations. Yeah, and my <laughs> name was in my name was in the uh, in the article. So it's like, and people are thinking, "Well, my gosh, aren't you scared? Or, or, or you know, what, aren't you worried about that?" I'm like, "No, <laughs> we just we we just made history. When have you ever seen evangelicals, uh, the Army of God, put in the headlines of a, a major mainstream media newspaper?" They're actually scared. They're warning the DNC. I mean, we just made history, folks. This is what's the exciting part. I mean, what part of that's not exciting? Oh, man, that's awesome. Uh, and the Washington Monument going is going to be, it's like, I, that's got to be like the, the pinnacle. I mean, it's an obelisk to, to bail, and it's himself. It's got yeah. to gotta be that moment when it topples, and we're just standing there as, as the Army looking at it, be like, Let's go. Like, we get like, there's got to be, we're going to have a party. All right, we're going to have a party, right? When that thing falls, the, we're, we're planning something. I'll start planning something. I don't know. We'll get everyone together and meet somewhere in the middle of nowhere. We'll just party all night yeah. because it's going to well, be you so know, awesome. It's funny you say that because, you know, I, when it may happen, I don't know when. I don't have a time frame, uh-huh. but it could be when Roe versus Wade is overturned because you got to remember the food source. I hate to put it this way, but it's just truth. The food source for bail are those aborted babies. Mm hmm. So that's the child sacrifice. So yeah. when that goes away, all bets are off. It's it's going to be a, a glorious, glorious day. Well, we got about let's uh, about three to to eight minutes left. What's something that's been on your heart recently that you just haven't had the opportunity to get out yet? Oh man, uh, that's kind of a tough one because I, I got so much in me. I think right now, you know, uh, you know, I think the biggest thing is, brother. I just want to encourage people. That's the biggest thing. It's just get in the fight. You know, uh, don't sit on the sidelines because, you know, don't let God pass you by. Because if, if, if you don't want to be used by God, God is a gentleman. He, he's not going to violate your will. So, it, it, you know, he'll go to somebody else. You know, don't let your giftings go to waste. There's a reason why you're here. And again, I don't care if you're laying in a bed sick, if you're in a hospital, it doesn't make a difference. God will use you right where you're at. And I cannot emphasize that enough because he used me to, to write a, a very powerful prophetic word when I was at my sickest. I didn't, again, I never thought I'd have gone down this road before. But I mean, it, I am just a prime example, my testimony 
uh, of what he's going to do in his end time in this end time run. And millennials like yourself, my gosh, brother, I, I'm so happy that, that that you're so fired up. And you know that's 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 the goal. That's the good news right there. It fires you up. It wants you to. It makes you feel like not only that I might end the fight, but I can be a part of something huge. You know the doom and gloom message. It robs people of hope. And when you rob people of hope, you rob them of the will to fight. And that's our job is to instill hope in people and give them the will to fight. That's what it is. Because, I mean, look around. Look at the winning that's taking place. If that doesn't give you hope, the signs that you're seeing on the news, look what's happening. A, a guy, a, a Supreme Court justice is fixing to retire. God said it was coming. You know what I mean? And so it's like God's saying all these things are coming. You know, he's given sign after sign after sign. It's like the excitement's building. It's brewing. And it's going to come to a point where this is going to be like a tsunami, a steamroller effect over the enemy, where the enemy cannot even stand in front of you, period. You're just going to steamroll them. You hear that, New World Order? We're coming for you. You got no chance, so you better just give up. But it's going to be awesome. It's going to be an awesome fight. Well, Mr. Taylor, where can people find you? What's coming up? I know there's a big book release coming up here in a couple days. Uh, so well, how can people support you? Well, you know, they can go to my uh, swordrescue.com. Sword is spelled S-O-R-D. There's no W in it. S-O-R-D dot, uh, rescue.com. And they can go, they can print off my prophetic words for free. And, you know, and, and I, I tell people, take those prophetic words, use them as prayers. Lay them out. It's like a blueprint. God's showing you where we're going. The book I got coming out, it's, it's already out. They can order it on Amazon. The official release date is July 4th. They can order it on Amazon. It's called The Trump Prophecies uh, by Mark Taylor and Mary, Col- and Mary Colbert. And they can go there, and it goes more into detail uh, about everything that we've been talking about. And, you know, one of the things, of course, I get accused of everything in the world. You know, I got big shoulders. I can take it. Everybody's accusing me of selling my gift in the book. There's All the prophetic words that are in the book have been on my website or on my website and have been on my website for free. All I do is I go into more detail, like we've been talking about here as to what they mean and where we're going, where God's going to go with all of this. So, but I think they'll enjoy the book. Yeah. And it's so much more than just, Oh, Trump's going to be president. And that's yeah. the end of the book. It's not a one page, one sentence book. <laughs> no. It's so much it's a, more. It's a weapon. Yeah. It's actually a weapon. Believe it or not, it's actually a weapon because people are using it as a weapon. Like I say, they're giving it to their pastors. Or a lot of the things I, I get is is they'll say, hey, I have family members that have cast me out because I've supported Donald Trump. I have friends that won't even talk to me because of it. Well, read this because it will explain why God chose him and what he's going to do through this man. Now, I'm not saying he's the Christ. So that's not what we're saying here because Jesus is the Christ, period. You know what I mean? It, God does all things, but he will use people that he chooses, just like you and me. So, uh, but it will explain a lot. It will help them to understand why God chose this man. Awesome. Well, Mr. Taylor, it has been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. And I really hope that you come back sometime because I just, uh, that conversation was so exciting. I got so amped up that I, it's like, uh, it's, it's the good news. It's what it does. Absolutely. I'll be back anytime. It was an honor <laughs> and a pleasure. Thank you for having me on here, brother. I appreciate it. All right, everyone. There you heard it. The Trump prophecies by Mr. Mark Taylor. Pick it up uh, July 4th in stores, and you can order it off, offline right now. Uh, truly, truly go support him. He needs it. And even if for some reason you don't want to buy the book for whatever crazy reason you might think of, send him an email, reach out to him, say, hey, I support you. I love you. You're a brother in Christ because let me tell you, people on the front lines need that encouragement because it, it goes a long, long way. Um, but that'll do it for today. I'm never going to ask you to like, subscribe, or share, but I appreciate it if you do. Uh, we are transferring all the videos onto a new channel called Their Sharpening Report, so go over there and take a look at the old shows that Josh Josh was doing. Uh, eventually, well, that will be our permanent home. You're running out of time uh, to do that. Um, and, again, pray for our country. Pray for Trump, whether you like him or not. He needs prayer. Our country needs prayer. we got to stop the abortion epidemic. And people, enjoy your life. Be excited. Be happy. Feel good. Be strong in the Lord and use those gifts he's given you. Thank you for tuning in and have a good day.